Picture this. You're outside on enjoying a hot summer day on the lake. You're wishing for a great place to grab an icy, cool treat. Just when you think there are no options, you hear the jingle of an ice cream truck. Hello, my name is Noah Felderman. I am 14 years old and I own Feldy's Ice Cream right here in eastern South Dakota. Feldy's Ice Cream serves SDSU ice cream and other fun summer treats right from our mobile unit along with other fun summer treats. We are based out of Lake Ponset, South Dakota but travel to many special events. We satisfy your sweet tooth with delicious, cool treats always served with a smile. Feldy's Ice Cream serves SDSU ice cream prepackaged novelties, iced coffee, frozen lemonades, milkshakes, and more. You can find us parked in a busy location at Lake Ponset or driving around with our ice cream truck music, jingling, serving treats to our wonderful customers. We also cater birthday parties, reunions, business events, and more. We sell SDSU ice cream made in Brookings, South Dakota, which is our best feature. While SDSU ice cream is unique, Serving only their ice cream can also be a drawback when their stock is low. Small communities are great because of small businesses and the people that support them. Feldy's Ice Cream is unique because I am the sole owner of this business, which I started at 12 years old with it from a UTV with a freezer and a generator in the back, and now have transitioned into this bus, which I hope to expand in the future. Lake Ponset does not have many places that you can snag a good cool treat at on a hot summer day, so we are in the perfect place to market our products. Now, to whom do I sell these treats? Many of our customers are families, but we see a wide range of customers because who doesn't want to enjoy a treat from Feldy's? Many of our customers are on weekend vacations and are not concerned about spending money on treats, which makes Lake Ponset an ideal location. In the next 10 years, ice cream consumption is projected to grow. Specialty stores and online sales markets are projected to increase the most in the next nine years. So my online ordering feature is in line with trends. While we mainly operate out of Lake Ponset, South Dakota, we also travel to different locations across eastern South Dakota. Many different factors impact my pricing, including the increased cost of fuel, supplies, and products. The products I sell range anywhere from 2 to $6, with many options for upsale. Now comes the big question. How do I reach these customers? Local fairs and events within a 100 mile radius are perfect for building a customer base and name recognition. Social media also plays a key role in our promotion, and we are also on the web at feldiesicecream.com, where customers can order online, request us to appear at an event, and more. We utilize social media platforms as well. Here's our website, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. With no major competitors of similar business structure, I identified Dollar General and Park Drive-In as two local competitors. I also identified a few regional competitors, as you can see here. The fun experience at our Nostalogic ice cream bus sets Feldy's apart from others that also sell SDSU ice cream. When the truck is parked at Lake Ponset, customers enjoy fun yard games in addition to an outdoor seating area. I am able to use SDSU's name recognition to promote my business as I serve their product. My strengths include that Feldy's is a small local business, has personal customer service, premium products, a unique destination for dessert, and where products are freshly made at SDSU. Weaknesses include a lack of employees, a smaller scale business, and my age. Being only 14, I was not able to apply for certain certifications. On the other hand, my age has also been helpful, being that a great community wants to support a young entrepreneur, and I have a tough niche, so it would be tough to compete with Feldy's ice cream. I was able to start Feldy's Ice Cream on my own. However, many people in my family have helped make this dream come true. My parents let me use their UTV when I first opened my operation in 2020 and have made numerous trips to SDSU with me to pick up ice cream. My dad helped me convert my bus and my mom took the food service certification courses since I am not 18. My family also helps tremendously with stocking supplies and serving customers. To start this business, I had to know everything from marketing to financials and certifications. Now that my business is fully established, the biggest ongoing expenses are supplies and products. Costs of SDSU ice cream and supplies are rapidly on the rise. Keeping products stocked is a huge duty and a main expense. Another recurring expenses are maintenance, fuel, and entry fees to events. The facilities and operations needed to operate include strong partnerships with suppliers and having a place to park my bus to make sales. 
Keeping an accurate record of financials is key to running a successful business. I utilize a square point of sale system and accept cash and major credit cards. My business include my expenses included wages and payroll, supplies, maintenance and utilities, advertising and professional fees, totaling four thousand eighty four dollars. My cost of goods sold totaled four thousand four hundred and six dollars, which included SDSU ice cream, other ice cream and merchandise. My sales included SDSU ice cream, other ice cream, and merchandise, totaling $10,440. My net profit this year at Feldy's Ice Cream was $1,950. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed learning about how I operate Feldy's to remain efficient and sustainable. I now welcome any questions that you may have at this time. Are you 14 or 44? Exactly. What the hell? <clears throat> I'm 14. How long have you been doing this? I started this when I was 12. So you've had two or three seasons now under this. So that financial, yep. I presume, is reality. Yep. Okay. That was this past year. Okay. So it's seasonal, Lake Ponset, and I, I get that. I heard that there's a new Dollar General there that everybody's yep. going to. So you really know your competition already. You've been doing it. What do you do on off time? Like, how do you make some money, or or is it just your downtime then? That's my downtime. So that's the time when I advertise and promote my business to try to get people to buy my gift cards for the upcoming season. Ooh or to try to get booked for certain events. We've done nursing homes, weddings, everything in, that you can imagine. Do you charge, oh go ahead. I was just saying, do you charge an appearance fee? Um, I do, so I charge $450 for the flat out fee and then the ice cream is added on and if any ice cream goes on top of that, they pay the extra. Do you include any ice cream in the 450 or is that just the? So that all the ice cream sold goes towards the 450 so then any ice cream that's sold that goes over 450. So it's a minimum of 450 yep. for your The minimum of 450. No matter what you sell. Yep. Is that, is that your net profit or is that based on gross sales? That's based on the gross sales. So after I take everything out, um, it, it kind of depends on how many people are there because if there's a lot of people at the event, then of course the, sale, the net sales are going to be higher. But so when you go to Lake Ponset, are there certain areas now, and I haven't done this two or three years, are there certain areas you go to so people know, people who are there know, hey, Feldy's going to be here on Saturday? Yes, so we mainly have this location. There's a restaurant at Lake Ponset that just recently closed. Um, so we park in their parking lot now. It used to be a very popular restaurant right on Highway 81, so everyone knows that I'm regularly parked there on the weekends. 11 to 9, so everybody knows that I'm going to be there at that official time. Okay. Do you have better margins on novelty bars or scoops? Um, I have better novelties. Um, I, on the novelties, I have a better margin, but that also depends on my main market is the SDSU ice cream. So with that, it kind of fluctuates between the two on how many I sell, but it's mainly the novelties because there's not as many costs that go into it, like cups and spoons and... If I missed it, but what's the merchandise you're selling? So the merchandise I have is the hats and cups and the okay. shirts. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, I saw you, I Megan, and I think, I think you might be underselling the price on those because your, your cost is, you know, there's not a lot of margin on right, them. That's I what think, I'm looking at. I think at those, you probably can make more margin on those than the ice cream. Yeah, so I didn't, <clears throat> this summer, the merchandise, I got them later in the year than I would normally sure. would have. So I didn't have enough time to sell them yeah, as well. I mean, the margin um, was definitely What, what were the prices price. of them? I missed it. Or did you not list the prices? Um, so, the price, generally. so the prices of my cups are sixteen fifty, and then my shirts are 18 and then my hats are also 18 True. And where did you get those? Um, are, are you going local, or are you going, like, yeah, you know, I get I got the cups from a brand called Silly Pint. They're silicone cups. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And then I got the shirts from a local lady who makes the shirts, and so supporting local businesses. I agree with what Chad said. You could actually make a lot more money on your merchandise, um, and there's all also better ways of mass producing, getting it from mass producers to lower your costs too. Because yep. those those cups that you're talking about, we ran into those on vacation, and those are really expensive. Yes. They're very unique, but they're very expensive. Because mm -hmm. we paid 40 bucks for them, and when we got home, we are like, why did we do this? So we didn't <laughs> need one more cup in our cupboard, you know? Um, but yeah, we were, I was on an island. Um, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of good avenues that you should kind of research to look to get costs down. 
Um, a lot of manufacturers, I, I could help you with that even, as long as you're purchasing several hundred at a time. Do you um, have an agreement with SDSU for yeah, special sure. pricing on things like ice cream? I mean, you're going to get to a certain volume where you're going to carry a little clout and you might be able to get it for less than I could walk in there and... Yep, so they have a wholesale mm -hmm. program, they so anybody that um, signs up to be a wholesaler, you get a discount okay. on the tubs purchased. So on your special events, uh, Nathan touched on that a little bit, but um, I think you're also underselling what you could charge at those events as well. In your experience, is the person who's hired you to come to the event, do they cover all the costs, or is it usually that they cover your 450 and then if people pay you for the things that they buy, how does it generally work? So I try to keep in line with my 450 with that, my other with my other regional competitors who also cater to different people. But this past summer I went to a nursing home and the they paid the flat fee and they gave each of the um, residents a coupon ticket and then they handed me the coupon ticket and I gave them their ice cream and I counted the coupon tickets at the end. You'll, and, yeah. Because okay. in your, uh, let me, let me yeah. just want to finish, because in your cost to get to the special event, correct, I mean, you've got additional gas, you're taking yourself out of other circulation, so you really need to charge a premium on that price, you know, I think you told Nathan that you charge like your, uh, to get to the 450, it's your gross sales, I think it really should be your net and probably a little bit more than your normal net, so that you eat up that 450 much quicker, <clears throat> uh, and then you can have additional charges on top of that. Um, you know, maybe you can bump your merch price, but then give them a discount for coming to the event if they buy so many dollars of your merchandise, because you can really make some big margin on your merchandise yeah. a lot more than on your ice cream. So, or you can tear it by the number of people you're coming to serve. You mm -hmm. know how many you're, you know if it's a 60 unit thing or a 30 people or a 200. Yep. Those yeah. th those should be worth. Um, uh, you can charge different price for that. You could invoice at a mileage rate for how far you got to go, because yeah. I imagine your van doesn't get. The greatest gas mileage. <laughs> oh, no, de definitely <laughs> not. Plus, but um, so we're in, at Lake Ponds, like I said. So every area kind of surrounding that Watertown, um, Watertown, Huron, we haven't really, we went to a lot like Brookings and places like that. So usually we're in those places and we try to, li and I try to line up the events so that when I'm in Watertown, I can hit a couple events at the same time. Mm -hmm. When I'm in Huron, I can do a couple. So, do you do any of the arts and the park festivals? Do you do the Brookings Arts Festival? Um, I was I was gonna this year, but then I that's my bus actually broke down oh. when I was on the way to uh, an event. So. So my brother and I had a lemonade stand for a long, long time, and we did all the arts festivals. So, similar to what you're doing as far as going around, we didn't go set up at uh, the lakes or things like you're doing. But I think the arts festivals will be a great opportunity mm -hmm. if you can get in. Yep because it's a juried competition, but I think your concept is really cool. Um, if you can get into some of those, uh, the Riverboat Days down in Yankton, Prairie Village in Madison, uh, Brookings Arts Festival. I like also like Nathan's idea about the, you know, tiering for the distance. I mean, there's expense to go someplace. So maybe the Watertown area is 450, but maybe Brookings or 50 miles outside of Watertown is another 50 bucks um, in order for you to make sure you're not sell your you know you're giving up your margin when you start traveling further away i think all of us are kind of looking at your your net and saying yep. you're worth more yeah, exactly, exactly. right you, you know that should be what you could net at one event yeah, I, yeah. So example, what, how do you get yeah, to that yeah point? for example like on your ice cream you are providing an extra service because you're coming to them or closer to them so it matters yes it matters what they could go to a regional you know like a dairy queen for but you should be able to get more yep. than they because you are providing an extra service. Yep, exactly right. And I know you have comp competitors, and it's it's good to be mindful of that. But remember, it's not a price competition. It's yep. a, it's it's what you have to offer them, features and benefits. Yep. You are giving your your chosen a great product. Everybody knows that's the SUA cream. So I'm mean, I. I have loads of it at the end of the year when my daughter comes home and she has a lot of dollars to spend. <laughs> Guess where she spends it? Guess the SU ice cream. So. And at 14, that number may have been satisfactory to you, but as you yeah. get older, yeah. you're going to want that number to be bigger to justify right. your time involved in this. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a great concept, and I think you can run it as long as you want, and maybe you train your successor so that when you're going to college, there's somebody still running Freddy's ice cream 
Now, granted, I hope you go right here to Northern because it's a fantastic <laughs> place to go continue your education. But you see my point? I mean, yep. if it's just you, then what happens when something changes with you? This could be a business that you could run for a long, long, long time until you have kids and they start running awesome. it if you want to do it that way. And another thing, it's always easier to start with your prices higher and come down on your prices versus having lower prices and going up. It's a much difficult, much more difficult if you do it that much way. More fun. But you know what? I yeah. hope I hope you're very proud of yourself because you should you be. You should be. At well, twelve years old, doing what you do is unheard of. And there are many people that are my age, fifty, that don't even know what you presented to us. So you know what? You should be very yeah, proud. very impressive at 14, mm -hmm. really much less 12, to, to, to get to this level. Yep. So now I think to go to the next level, you've done a lot of the hard work. Now it's just refining things, and I think yep. you have a lot of upside here. Great job. Yeah, very good job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Keep Call it up. the South Dakota Arts Make Council. More money. They have a list of all the fairs and events and things like that. So Have a goal. Do 10 grand next summer. Yeah. All go. right. Yeah. Okay. Very Just doable. for you. Very doable. <laughs> charge more. The big, the scariest thing we did is we charged from $1 a cup for lemonade when we went to $1.50. It's like, holy crap. But if you think about it in terms of increment, you can still lose a third of your business to make the same money. Yep. yep. So when you increase your price, you, you can suffer a decrease in volume and still make more money. Oh, yeah. You're, You're selling... Hard. You're selling a service, mm -hmm. not just a product. Right. Yeah. Bigger isn't always better. Exactly. More isn't always better. Good luck to you. So, well, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Look forward to seeing Freddy's. Look forward to trying some ice cream if I'm in Ponce. Feldy's. <laughs> Feldy's, and, and do you ever come to Aberdeen for any events? Um, I haven't. No, not yet. But we held a survey, and um, the Brown County Fair was a... That would be a, a popular one. You should do Arts in the Park. Arts in the Park would be another good one. Arts in the yep. Park and would be a And it's not very one. expensive to get in either. Right. Yep, and there used to be Musil's ice cream that used to come up to Aberdeen. That's kind of gone away, so you really should look at coming to Aberdeen for the Arts in the Park. Get that Arts Council book up. Mm -hmm. Father's Day weekend, I think, is when it usually mm -hmm. is. Ted B, call me if you want some contacts on the arts. I know. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank Good you. Luck yep. to you.